How do we know the truth? And this is not a philosophical question. It's a practical question that courts deal with every day. Because they know that people lie. And people lie because they want to avoid negative consequences or unpleasant situations. Many of you will say we have a way to know the truth from why. We use polygraph, we use DNA, we use fingerprints, eyewitness, and the list goes on and on. If I ask you which one of them is the best, if you watch CSI, you will probably say DNA and fingerprints. Polygraph, well, not that reliable. I'm here to tell you the opposite. I'm a criminal investigator, polygraph examiner, and for the last 40 years, I interviewed, interrogated, polygraph tested over 35,000 people. And I can tell you that the polygraph is reliable and it is the most reliable and efficient tool that we can use in our quest for the tools. But let's start with the other tools first. Theoretically, all of them are 100% accurate, no doubt about it. Practically, the implementation reduces the accuracy rate, sometimes dramatically, because of the human factor that plays a factor over here. Let's start with the fingerprint. Since 1995, there is an ongoing proficiency test done annually to fingerprints experts. Thousands of fingerprints experts took the test so far, and the results are the following. 59% of them did correctly. 7.5% made an incorrect decision, and 34% was undecided. What about the DNA? The new queen of evidence. September 11, 2001, a tragical day. 23,000 and something samples are being pulled out from World Trade Center racks. It has to be compared to 2,700 missing persons in order to identify them. Out of the 23,000 samples, the DNA was able to identify only 111 people. This is less than half percent. And if that is not bad enough, recently a Tel Aviv-based life science company was able to manufacture false DNA samples that can incriminate whoever they want. Now, don't misunderstand me and don't take me wrong. I'm totally convinced that all these tools should be admissible in court and should help the court. The more information the court have, the better judgments they can make. After all, judges and jurors are about human beings and they need as much information as possible in order to render a correct, de a correct decision. What about the polygraph? But first, what is a polygraph? A polygraph is an electronic instrument that measures blood pressure, heart rate, electrodermal activity, and respiratory rate. While the person is being connected to the polygraph and being tested for his credibility. The polygraph as an instrument is a 100% accurate instrument. There's no doubt about it. When the polygraph re record the responses of the human person, the recording are 100% accurate. What causes the false results? The examiner, again. A qualified examiner, when he uses the polygraph, he can, give, he can bring it close to perfection. An unqualified examiner, bad news, dangerous. Unqualified examiner will ask wrong questions. An unqualified examiner will forget the nervousness and the anxiety of the examinees and will forget to ease them. It's very important because everybody who comes to the test is nervous and anxious. Unqualified examiner will disregard the contaminations we have in a test. Unqualified examiner will wrongfully analyze the polygraph charts. In a way, it's very similar to a vehicle. Vehicles are 100% safe. Vehicles does, does not turn over pedestrian. Vehicles does not collide with other cars. Vehicles don't make accidents. Vehicles are 100% safe. 
the driver is always almost the one responsible for the accident. I guess by now some of you think, well, you're a polygraph person, so no wonder that you say what you say. It's not about what I think, it's about what, what our research think. Research shows, uh, research done by Vidatsky and Horvath showed they, they compare different types of uh, forensic tools. And the research results were the polygraph was 90% correct, 5% incorrect, 5% inconclusive. Eyewitnesses were 35% correct, 25% incorrect, and 40% inconclusive. Fingerprints was only 20% correct, 0% incorrect, but 80% inconclusive. I guess by now you ask, if it's so good, how come it has such a bad reputation? There are several reasons for that. I think the first one is the name itself. Polygraph is being nicknamed lie detector. Whenever you use the word detector, it suggests an instrument, it suggests a machine. And we humans expect machines to be 100% uh, correct. Most people don't know that there is an examiner behind the machine, and the examiner is the one who makes the decisions, and the examiner is the one who makes the mistakes. But this reason is more like a background noise. The real reason is that we, examiner, failed in the past to develop evidence-based protocols. From 1921, when the polygraph was f became first operational, for about 60 years, we had different schools of polygraph, no solid research that could prove which school is the best, which test format is the best one, which one should be used. In 2012, after many years of thorough research, of accumulated results of research, of experience gained, of better, of better training, of better instrumentation, an evidence-based polygraph protocol was created. A protocol that demand at least 86% accuracy. A protocol that meets the federal rule of evidence. Last but not least, 70% of people who are being polygraphed pass the test, they come out useful. For me, that's the most strongest argument in my quest to justice and truth. Because by the end of the day, the polygraph helped to exonerate people rather than to convict people. I thank you for your attention. I rest my case and have a nice day. Thank you.